Hey everybody, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to Catlin Crops, welcome to the Albrecht Tall map. I haven't played this game in almost two years. I saw it for sale on the GOG store, the GOG website, and I thought, let's give it a try. Let's see what's different in two years. So, uh, <laughs> I got a couple controls configured. I've got my sensitivity back down, but he still... Uh, he still has one speed, and that speed is brisk, and also the camera really, really throws itself around. So I'll do my best not to give you any kind of motion sickness, but no guarantees. And other than that, we're going to try to be positive. When I say we, I mean me. I'm going to try to be positive about this game. I'm going to try. Right, welcome to Albert Tall. Here we go. Needs a smaller trigger. Is it right in there? Is it only the check mark? Fine. All right, here we go. Start your career in Albrechtal. You inherit the farm, not a farm, the farm in Albrechtal, including a small starting vehicle fleet, bulls, and some fields you have to take care of. Oh, that's excellent news. That is fantastic. There we go. Hopefully our audio doesn't desync as we're creating content. Enter the MB track. You got it. Let's go first person. Something I do like about this game is it's got a lot of IC built into base game. So when we come over here, I like so sensitive. We've got IC interior and exterior IC built in. I really like that. All right, so we're going to enter the MB track. All right at the bottom left of the mini map, you can see a blue line. Yep, I see it. With the default N key, you can activate the autopilot. No, we're not going to do that. I want to drive manually. And also, I don't trust that autopilot. So let's do this. Let's get some windows open. Right there. And right there. Let's get this thing started. Right there. Break is off. Right? Tons of IC. I love it. And you can bypass all this stuff as well. You don't have to use this stuff. You can... All the way over there. Yep. The center is open. You can use key commands or you can go with the manual IC. I like that. I like that that's in base game. Uh, right down here. Like so. Right. I'm going to zoom out in first person a little bit. Right there. And then we're going to go third person and zoom out a little bit there. And we're supposed to drive to the vehicle trader. You got it. Here we go. So, yep, I was an early supporter of this game. I sent them 100 bucks via Kickstarter and got the gold, platinum, ultimate, year one, year two. I got it all. And the game, uh, it really frustrated me. It really disappointed me. And the feedback that I was getting from the developers led me to believe that uh, perhaps this crew was not... <laughs> Perhaps they had not found their spirit animal, if you know what I'm saying. Game development, any kind of application development, running a business, it's its not necessarily what you think it is. It can be a little, you know? So, I got very frustrated with the developers. I got very frustrated with the game, and I kind of gave up on it. I uninstalled it, and I actually reached out to the developers and had them delete my account, because I really never intended to play it again. But I did see it for sale, and I thought, well, let's let's take a look. Now I have seen Steam comments uh, on the on the Steam store for this game. I've seen comments up to uh, a month or two ago saying, yeah, in the past three years, and this week will be three years of early access. In the past three years, the developers really haven't done anything for the game. It is all but abandoned. So I thought I would check it out, confirm that for myself. Something else, and I, I guess I could have started the video by saying this. I desperately want this game to succeed for several reasons. As much as I talk shit on the developers, I do want them to be successful. I want everybody to be successful. I want everybody to be happy and productive. I want everybody to make enough money. I really do. And unfortunately, that's not the way life works. Sometimes things don't go the way you intend them to. But I want them to be successful. And I also want a realistic farm simulator. And we play the farm sim franchise. But we know it's a farm game. It may be called farm simulator, but it's a farm game. 
And I'm in FS17 right now. I went back from FS19 back to FS17. I've got the game heavily modded to try to make it more realistic, to try to bring uh, those sorts of uh, challenges into the game. And I accept that, sir, I accept that that's, that's what it is. Farm Sim is a game, but I, not right. But I want there to be a farm simulator. And I guess I had hoped that this could be it. And I, I don't know if it will be or not. I don't know if it's ever even going to be done. And like those threads said, you know, there are a lot of things that I'm seeing in the game that makes you wonder, what have they been up to the past few years? Now, something I can tell you from my own experience in software development, uh, I was part of a startup in Los Angeles. If you don't, don't know that about me, I was part of a software startup. And what I can tell you is the money, it looks like a lot of money when you get it. But then when you have to spend it, it's suddenly a very small amount of money. And you think, you know, almost a million euro via Kickstarter, that's a lot of money. And then you think split five ways, that's like 200 grand. And then you think over three years, right? That's like 65 grand. And that's certainly enough to keep the lights turned on. But then you think about things like taxes and you think about not all of that money went to, I don't know how many developers there are, I'm just guessing five. But when you, when you realize not all that money went to the developers, like it didn't all just go into their pocket. And we're still, we still got a mission here. I'm not just, I'm not just driving around. Uh, attach the Mix King, you got it. So of that million, you know, they had to do things like, like license uh, C4, which is now uh, C4, became obsolete and is now Tombstone. So that they're transferring everything over to Tombstone, but they have to license those from whoever owns that engine, right? There we go, we got that hooked up. I'm gonna back up just a little bit more so we clear this curb. Oh, and one other thing I can show you while we're here. Check this out. This has been added since the last time I played. We've got a Wonder Wheel and this is really nice. We've also got that hot bar down at the bottom. We'll talk about that a little bit as we get rolling. Let's get rid of this. And I'm going to back up just a little bit more so we clear this curb. Yeah, you, you've got to license the engine that you're going to build on. You've got to, well, you've got to hire an attorney and an accountant first off. That's going to cost you 10%. You've got to uh, buy technology. You've got to buy hardware. You've got to rent servers. You've got to do a lot of things. So of that money that they raised, I don't know how much of it went into their pockets. And when I say that, I don't mean it in a bad way. I mean, you have to, you have to live, you have to survive, you gotta pay your mortgage. So if the developers were working on this game full time, they didn't, they didn't get rich. And that's something that I heard people say, you know, a million euro, they got a million euro via Kickstarter. Well, they didn't keep it. <laughs> they didn't keep it all. At a minimum, it was split five ways and then they paid taxes on it. And after all that, you know, that's, that's not a fortune spread over three or four years. But they didn't even do that because they did have expenses. So I hope the game is not abandoned, but I wonder how much of that money is left. And like I said, I know from my own experience that when you see that money in a bulk amount, you think, oh yeah, we can conquer the world with this. And then you start uh, nickel and diming for expenses and salaries and that sort of thing. And all of a sudden that huge pile of money, and in our case, it was almost 5 million US, that 5 million, it just went so quickly and none of us were getting rich. I mean, we weren't paying ourselves lavishly. It just, it's expensive to run a business and it's particularly expensive to run a business where you are building something from the ground up because it seems like every day there is an unexpected expense. So, like I said, I, I want the developers to succeed. I wish them well, and we'll see how this video goes and whether th this is something we want to bring to the channel. So that's my backstory, uh, my history with cattle and crops. Let's talk a little bit more about the game. I really like the HUD, uh, lower right side. I really like that information panel. I like seeing RPM and vehicle speed, gear, all that sort of thing. Uh, gears built into the game. And that's something that we had to sort of add to farm sim. So I love seeing it in base game. That heart bar, heart bar, heart bar. It's not a heart bar. It's a hot bar. Come on now. That hot bar 
down at the bottom is also very cool. I constantly run out of key combos on a gamepad for farm sim because there are so many. And then you get into those like super macro two and three and four button combos. That's a little tricky. That hot bar, as I recall, is specific per vehicle and per implement. So you can hot key different tractors in different ways. So when you get in one tractor, you've got hot bar options for that. And when you get in another tractor, you've got hot bar options for that. That is a very cool feature. I really like that. Okay, so we are going to drive to the farm. I believe we've just about done that. There we are. Detach the Mix King. Yep. I actually remember <laughs> this from the tutorial the first time I played it. That also concerns me a little bit, that there is no new farm, no new map in three years, that there is the same tutorial. That, that all concerns me, and it makes me think, as I said earlier, that they've They've simply run out of money and the problem with running out of money is very soon after you run out of money people begin to lose interest not because they were in it for the money but because it's really hard to keep people motivated when a they're wondering if they're going to get paid and b they don't know if the project is going to succeed right so we'll clear that one let's get this thing parked up and then we'll go do the biogas mission yeah it's not to suggest that people are mercenary but if you're, if you're pouring yourself into a project, heart and soul, for very little money, to find out that, like I said, there might not be any money, even though there's not enough for you to live on, there might not be any, that sucks. And then also to realize we might not even get done with this. That's when people begin to jump ship because they gotta make a living. And also, people like successes. People like to be part of things that work. All right, so we'll turn that off, we'll hop out of here. We'll back up, we'll close that, and when it uh, when it becomes clear to people that that something isn't going to happen, motivation just goes away, as if by magic. Right? It smells, but we need it. Spreading slurry with the Stoppel VT eighteen thousand. Let's try it. So we're going to accept that. Right? Hey, kitty. We got a kitty, and we've got. Somewhere around here, we've got a dog. No? I saw him when we came in. Where's our, where's our little terrifying pup? Did he despawn? Where you at, buddy? I don't know what it is with dogs in games, but they absolutely fascinate people. Everybody wants to pet the dog. Uh, all right, I'm not seeing him. He's taken off somewhere. All right, so we are to get in the Kloss area in 530, which we'll do. Now, we don't have to use all the IC. We can just skip it like that. And we're going to come out like this. Not quite that far. Yeah, right about like there. And let's, let's do the same thing. Let's fire up to begin with. Do that. Let's get some windows open here, get a little fresh air. Beautiful summer day. All right. And then right there. And then our handbrake is eh. Uh, did it? That's four wheel drive. That's not it. Uh, that's it right there. There you are. We'll go third person. We'll back out on this one a little bit. Let's drive around to the other side. And I'm trying to think what else is new or different. Um, I do see a lot of new vehicles. I see a lot of new Lemkin equipment. Uh, that's encouraging. Um, I don't... Well, we'll see what happens when we get to the end of the tutorial. There's our little pup. Hey, buddy. We'll see what happens when we get to the end of the tutorial. Well, first off, we'll see if we even want to bring this... To the channel. If something else, um, oh, hang on. Before we do anything else, let's do this. Uh, there we go. So we'll put those away. Yep. Something else that is, uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel some kind of a way about it. Most of the farm sim people that I interact with 
are what I would think of as sim farmers. They want a farm sim rather than a farm game. They tend to be more serious players. They're into modding and, you know, the whole deal. The discords that I interact with are people that are into farm sim as a sim more than as a game. I don't know anybody, I barely know anybody who's even played Cattle and Crops as early access or beta. I don't know anybody, I don't think I've ever even heard of anybody playing this game on the regular. And that is, are we, uh, there we go. And that is, it's not good or bad, I think it's just indicative, you know? I think it, it speaks to sort of where the game is. And that, more than anything else, is uh, not concerning, but confirmation, perhaps. Let me see. There we go. All right. Fill the trailer with bull slurry. You got it. Are we, are we in a trigger? Let's do this. Let's hop back in here. Let's set our break like so. We'll go back out here. And let's see if we can fill type is not supported. Let's try this. Loading. There we go. Full slurry. This is new. So I'm guessing this is solids content. So are we 90% water? Right? That makes sense. And we've got NPK. That is very cool. And that's the sort of detail I want in my farm sim. So I've always liked that about this game. Uh, about this sim and I see uh, you know what I see some IC stuff out here but I'm not going to interact with it because everything's going smoothly all right uh, it says we only need about 6,000 liters but I'm gonna go ahead and fill it all the way right because why not why wouldn't you we're already here what else uh, immersive yeah I mean yeah, it's immersive. I don't know what kind of graphics quality we would want in a farm sim. I don't know if we're ever going to see it completely immersive, photorealistic. But I don't know that it needs to be. You know, I give the Richard Bird's Rally fanboys, I give them grief because they love that game so much and the graphics are just so flat and dead and dated. But the physics and the sound and the gameplay make the game work, and so they love it. All right, let's go back in here, take our break off. Right here. All right, and now we're going to field three. And I believe when we pull out of the trigger, that big dialog box will go away. Yep, that one's gone. And now let's, before we go any further, get rid of that one, beautiful. So yeah, I give them grief because it's not a very good looking game. And I prefer, you know, this kind of look, that kind of look. It's, I hope that, that, I hope you hear that as I intend it. It's just some good natured, I don't know, smack talk amongst gamers. But then I'll turn around and play something like ETS and ATS, which, although they do have their moments, those games are, are pretty dated as well. And you think, how could you be so into a game like Truck Sim? It looks really bad. I agree. I agree. It is not the best looking game, but it works. And I think that's the, the thing that we need to remember about games is they don't have to be perfect for them to work. They just have to work. And I don't know if this game will, I mean, we'll give it a few episodes. I'm not opposed to that. Not by any means. We'll give it a few episodes, and let's just see if it works. Does it work? Is it something that we can, I don't know, something we can get into? So we'll come down here. We're going to cross this little road right here. All right. Oh, and we are, I guess I could have mentioned this to start the episode. We are on, our graphic settings are high, not ultra. And we're at a solid 60 FPS right now. Graphics card and CPU, neither one are working too hard. I've seen a little bit of chugging. I've seen a little bit of stuttering. 
but nothing terrible. Yep. Tractors do have a nice weight to them. They've got a good, uh, solid feel to them. And I definitely get the impression that I'm pulling some weight right now. And there also is a manual gear override, which I really appreciate. If you're not downshifting quickly enough in automatic mode, you can manually override it. Right. Let me zoom out just a little bit more here. Because I think we're fixing to do some spraying. All right. So we are going to field three. Uh, I think that's this one. I hope it is. Extrude the Stoppel booms. You got it. Like so. All right. This is all working for me. Very nice. All right. So then we're going to turn it on. Okay, valves opening and closing. Fertilize field three. Is this field three? Uh, I I don't know at this point. If we if we go here, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is field three. I assume it is. It is highlighted in green, so perhaps that means we own it. Okay. All right, so let's get turned around here a little bit better. Now, this is the best part of this game. What you're about to see is the best part of this game, and that is the terrain deformation and the mud physics. I love it. All right, uh, so we need to... Is it Y? All right, that's down. Does it spray automatically as we, as we roll? Yep. Okay. Our volume is decreasing. And the texture is different on this side than it is on that side. So we are spraying. Okay. And I'll show you something else that I discovered last night as I was kind of testing things out a little bit. There is, uh, I guess, the, the amount of thought that's gone into the fields and the crops themselves is something I really appreciate. I was testing out the haymaking process yesterday. And it's got, there's just a, an extraordinary amount of information that is included. If you remember the, oh, uh, what was it called? Uh, it was before seasons. Was it the field monitor? Oh, uh, I don't remember. But there was a mod for 15 that brought moisture and weeds and NPK to crops. Oh, I don't recall the name of it off the top of my head, but that was, it was a mod that was so comprehensive it was almost difficult to use, and I really, uh, I, I couldn't necessarily get the most out of it, but I appreciated what it was as a mod, and I sort of wanted more of that, and I feel like that's the sort of, that's the functionality, slow down a little bit here, that's the functionality that the developers are trying to bring to cattle and crops. And that's what I want. I want it to succeed. I can't stress that enough. I want this game to make it. And I want it to be our realistic farm sim. Right, so we'll come down here. And then I think... When we get to the edge of the field, we're going to lift... Are we still spraying? I don't think we are. Oh wow, and we've used, <laughs> we used 75% of a tank on that, on that one pass. Interesting, let's go back to our wheel here. Let's go back to our magic wheel because I think I saw somewhere in there, I think I saw a, uh, was there a rate? Is there a spray rate? Uh, no. Nope. Okay, I thought I saw one. All right, uh, so we'll go back here then. We may have to go fill up back at the farm. If we do, we do. So we will lower this again. Uh, it was the soil mod. That's it. I couldn't remember what the name of it was. Just the soil mod. 
and it was uh, unbelievably comprehensive. So we'll hop out here in a minute, uh, or perhaps when we get to the end of this row, we'll hop out and see if we get that same analysis tool for the field, if we can take a look. Now, I don't know how demanding that will be if we continue playing cattle and crops. I don't know how demanding that will be as far as sorting all that out, particularly in the context of a game that may not be done yet, he said cautiously. You know what I mean? If the game's not even done and we're trying to sort out things like uh, disable, okay. Uh, sir? Disable, okay. Well, uh, now what? <laughs> I'm going to need to back up to this thing, see if we can get hooked up again, and I suspect that we cannot. Oh, we can. Fantastic. Okay. So disable is A. It's already disabled. Raise the booms. Right? Collapse the booms. I'm really glad we were able to pick that up and continue with the episode. Uh, now, do we go refill? Because they did tell us, initially they told us 5,000 liters. We took 18,000. That still wasn't enough. Drive to the slurry pump. I think we're going back to the farm. Uh, let's let's do this. Put it back in gear. I'm going to hop out. And let's go first person. And see if we get our analysis tool. Yeah, it's not giving us... Or do we have to be third person? No. I'm not going to dick around with it a whole lot right now, but yesterday I was able to find an analysis tool in the hayfield that really like laid everything out for us as far as what the what the moisture content was, uh, just everything. And I'm curious if we can do that for this field as well. Yeah, that is that's straight up 3D right there. That is not just a, a texture with a shadow to give you the impression of it. Yeah. All right. All right, cattle and crops. I'm not, I'm not hating you at the moment. Where are we out on time? We're at 28 minutes. Let's go ahead and call it there. I'll go, I'll go back to the farm. I'll refill this thing. I'll bring it back here and finish this field. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing more of this. I don't mind continuing to play it. I don't mind uh, continuing to explore it, give it a chance, and see how it all works out. Just let me know in the comments whether or not we should, and we'll go from there. So there you have it. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for our first episode, maybe, of Cattle and Crops. This is the Albert Tall Map. We'll see you next time. Take care now.